If this call goes through, Errata Kashgari might finally know what happened to her family on the other side of the world. But the ringing ends in silence, just like Kashgari's other phone calls to this number since the end of 2016. And that's what happens every time? Generally, it'll just ring. Kashgari is Uyghur American. Her family is from an area in western China commonly known as Xinjiang. U.S. officials have said the Chinese government is detaining over one million Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities and camps in order to erase their religious and ethnic identity. The Chinese embassy declined multiple requests for an interview. But in an email, a spokesperson referenced a previous press conference with Chinese officials where an official claimed that allegedly missing people whose information had circulated on media platforms are living normal and stable lives. But many Uyghur Americans anxiously await any word from their relatives in China who have disappeared. My immediate family is here, my parents, my brothers, um, but my grandma, my aunts and my uncles are all back there. When you try to get in contact with them, what happens? Dial tone. All we hear is a ringing and nothing, nothing happens. Other phone numbers are disconnected. The number you have dialed is not in service. Uyghurs are reportedly forced to learn Chinese in the detention centers, and Uyghurs say merely speaking their native language in the Uyghur region can risk trouble with government authorities. The first time that I tried to call back home, my parents kept saying, just make sure you don't say salam alaikum. For Uyghurs in China, speaking their native language is incredibly risky. But on the other side of the world, just past these doors behind me, Uyghur Americans are working to make sure that their language is preserved for the next generation. I really wanted to give a sense of identity to the Uyghur kids that are also growing up in the diaspora that aren't able to uh, connect with their family members back home. That's why Kashgari co-founded Anna Karen Education, a Uyghur language learning school. Every Sunday, children and teenagers gather to practice speaking, writing, dancing, and more. My favorite part about coming here is that I could like communicate with my Uyghur friends. They're really nice, they treat me, like whenever I'm sad, they come up. But for all of the fun students have at Anna Karen Education, the human rights violations in the Uyghur region can still loom over classes. How much do the kids know about the situation? Are they coming to you with questions? The older kids, they're engaged. They know what's happening. The little kids, I think sometimes they do uh, understand it. You hear comments that normally you would never hear from a five-year-old or a six-year-old. What sorts of comments are you hearing from those kids? Things like, you know, I don't know where my grandma is. Do you know where your grandma is? It's things that, you know, they say it in such a kiddish, childish manner. Or like, you know, I can't go back. Now, students at Anna Karen Education immerse themselves in a culture that is oppressed in China, while teachers like Kashgari push for a better world. No matter what horrific things are happening back home, this is the future we want to be able to have. Megan Leibowitz, Fairfax.